Hello, followers of Eurovision Insider. I'm Elsie Bay. Elsa, hi. So how was hey. your day? Uh, good. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly fine. The day was crazy a bit, but now I'm feeling great. Why do we do this? Why not give in to it? Though left unsaid... There were, of course, rumors before the official announcement of the participants of MGP. Uh, you stated that you will not take part in this uh, this year of Multi Grand Prix, and as it is, you're actually participating. So, was that disapproval words uh, purposeful to not um, announce you before the official announcement? I think what happened was that somebody leaked all the 21 artists, yeah. like correct all the 21 artists the day before, and I thought, you know, oh, it's such a shame that somebody's gonna take away that moment from all the artists you know everybody's looking forward to this they've kept it a secret for so long and uh and they just want to go out on that stage that day and reveal themselves and then when somebody got all of them correct you know i i respect that people speculate and they wish for this one to come back but but obviously this person knew everyone and so i was thinking no let's just create some something fun here so that so that people don't think that they oh. got them all right and that it would still be exciting up until the moment of the actual reveal. So I think I said something like, it's too soon for me to say when it will be. And it was too soon. I couldn't say anything wow. and confirm anything until the day after. Um, yeah, so it was just to try and keep it exciting until the actual reveal. What is your national selection song about? It's about reaching out to the people that you love before it's too late. And it's written from the perspective of a person who doesn't really have the courage to do that. And who's like making up oh. silly excuses. Wow. All right. That's actually deeper than I thought. All right. And um, of course, will we see a music video for that song? If I win. <laughs> <gasps> or, all right. That statement is yeah. already quite likable. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh it, we we really want to do the song justice with the proper music video and i think like if i'm going to be completely honest uh i would need to win to get that budget so so i really want to want to get the opportunity to show you a proper music video and of course go to your right. we want what to expect from your performance uh of love you in a dream well i mean first of all i hope you will like it um it's it's gonna be a little different from last year. I mean, obviously, I will sing a song and be on stage, but we've we've um, come up with with something different this year, and I hope people will like it. I think it's appropriate for the song. Uh, however, I haven't seen it yet, so because we don't get to come in and, and actually do the rehearsals with the camera and everything, everything until the last few days. So I'm also very excited myself to to see it. This year, MGP producers, organizers, uh, they uh, uh, announced that they are saying yes to Aftertune, that people can use Aftertune on stage of uh, Melody Grand Prix. Uh, someone, of course, condemned them, saying that it's not wrong, but somebody uh, loved it, saying that they have done the right choice. But uh, what do you think of this? Uh, are you planning to use Aftertune on stage? I am planning to check what it sounds like with and without on rehearsals and i i get that it's like people saying why do we have that in mgp when you can't really have it in eurovision um and at the same time i understand nrk when when they're saying that every other music show in norway is using autotune and they don't want their singers to to uh, sound like they're not equally as as good and they don't want the quality of their show to to sound less than anybody else and i understand that as well and from my perspective i think that i would prefer that everything was tuned because you know you have you have all the instruments that are in the backing track and all the vocals in the backing tracks they are tuned and and so i would prefer that everything is tuned with the live vocal or that everything is live that you actually have the instruments i i personally think that it's not ideal when you have a whole backing track with vocalists and everything on it that is perfectly tuned and then you have one tiny voice on top of it that it's not yeah. in tune I, I think that's not the best that's not going to give you the best audio quality so for me everything tuned or everything live would be preferred but 
but you never know. Um, so I have to check what it sounds like with autotune. Maybe it, it doesn't sound very good and then I would do it live and maybe live doesn't sound very good with this track. You, you never know. All right. Okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think that is the fair answer for sure. I agree with yeah. you. Uh, and I think what also what people must remember is that autotune doesn't make everybody a great singer because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you the right note to go to. It only gives you a little help uh, to go to the note that's closest to what you're actually singing. So if you sing the wrong note, then autotune doesn't help you at all. It makes it worse. Yeah. So you have to actually be a good singer and you have to have a nice voice. It doesn't give you a nice voice. Yeah. So, so it, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, that you, you spilled the truth. That is actually the truth. And uh, I don't think you should be sorry for saying that. That is a complete fact. Uh, what's about other participants of MGP? Have you already made friends with someone else? And uh, I think you heard some few parts of their songs. What do you think of them? I like a lot of the songs. I mean, I'm very biased because I wrote Elena Torp's song and I, I've gotten to know her through this. Uh Sandra Ling is also uh, someone I've gotten to know um, recently. I uh, really like her. Um, and there are a lot of great songs. And I have heard a few of from the third semifinal as well, even if they're not out yet. And it really, sounds very promising. So yeah. it's going to be a tough fight. But last year, you were one of the four participants who was the closest to actually presenting Norway. But in the end, uh, they, you weren't selected in a gold duel. Uh, what do you have? What memories do you have of that experience? Uh, what do you learn from that? Honestly. Well. It was a very fun experience, and I felt like the the performance that I did in the finals was was good enough for me to be proud of myself. And I was very nervous for that performance. So when when the performance was over and I felt like I had done as good as I could, and I also was announced top four, I was kind of very happy about that. And so when I didn't go to the to the gold final, or you will call it, um, in that moment it didn't feel like it mattered that much in a way you know of course I wanted to win but at the same time I felt like I had come so far and since I didn't win I could also party with all my friends and family who were there and just um, celebrate this chapter that we'd worked so hard with that was finally over and I felt like we succeeded still even if we didn't win yeah. and so yeah, I was a favorite to win, but I also had realistic expectations that yeah. most of us will not win. Um, so I'm actually very proud that I, I felt like I had a really, really good time regardless. Yeah. Well, we wanted to ask you, what do you do except singing, of course? I am a songwriter for other artists. That's usually what I work with. Um, that or my own project or... Um, Sometimes I sell vocals, like I sing on a DJ track, that, oh, that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much what I do. And uh, speaking about um, your work on other people's music, uh, what other artists inspire you to write your music, to write songs for other people? Oh, you should check out a Norwegian artist called Emilia Nicola. I really like her stuff. She's got really nice lyrics. Um, and I think for me, a lot of what I need in order to be inspired is a good lyric because a good lyric makes me think and reflect and that ins makes me also inspired to write my own stuff. I think it's a stupid question, but we want to ask you, are you a fan of Eurovision Song Contest? Have you watched last year's contest? Uh, what were your favorites? Yeah, I am. I'm definitely a fan. Um, more so the, the recent years, you know, getting into whole MGP of being a songwriter for other people and participating myself as well it's it's definitely piqued my interest um but I also remember back in 2009 when Norway won it was like I got to stay up late and watch it and and it was a huge experience um and last year I, I gotta say that Sweden with Cornelia was my favorite have you heard this year participating songs? It's like only three songs came out that are officially being the representatives of their countries have you heard them? Actually, I haven't. I've I've said to myself, because, you know, there are so many national finals going on and all of that. So I've just said to myself, get through MGP, 
or at least the first time I found it, we'll see what happens and then sit down and chill and listen to the to the other songs. We will hear uh, new songs together with you and Emily. And you say that uh, stated that you're mostly unsure about that. Uh, do you still go with that? Yes, <laughs> I I am not very much in contact with with her. So, so oh, yeah. okay. thank you so much. Uh, it was just unbelievably great to talk to you, to chat with you. Thank you thank so you much. Awesome. And remember to vote. Okay. Why Bye. Do Bye. We do 